everyone. Uh, you're watching the Help on AMA and Amara back today to join us. We have got Carol, who is the CTO of Composable Finance. Carol, thank you so much for uh, joining us and for this chat. Um, tell us a little bit about Composable, what you're doing there, and then we can take it from there. Thank you for inviting me over. So Composable Finance is a crypto infrastructure project. We run our own blockchains geared towards connecting other blockchain ecosystems together. So we do a lot of very fundamental mathematical work related to proving that some other chain has reached a certain state, uh, transmitting that to another chain and using that to, for example, enable secure asset transfers or message passing between smart contracts. Well, I just got back from Unchained, which was a very beautifully put together event that you guys had in Berlin. And I saw that you um, also launched XCVM, which is your very own virtual machine, cross-chain virtual machine. So tell us a bit about that. I'm sure we would love to know um, and explore the platform a bit more. Yeah, so describe a little bit, I'm gonna dive a little bit to how the bridging ecosystem looks like now and what our solution is to some current problems. As of right now, a lot of competing blockchain bridges do offer message passing, which you can best, I guess, visualize as a raw socket, being able to pass bytes to another chain. But currently, they're not really protocols on what these messages should look like. So what a lot of companies are doing is defining their own protocols. Instead of one HTTP, we have hundreds of competing standards. And to be honest, these standards are usually thought of for specific products and not even translated across cross-chain products. Um, with these standards come a lot of assumptions about how assets should be handled, how monitoring and security should be handled, how fraud should be detected and disputed across these bridges. And that leads to a, a very messy situation that looks a lot like early internet. Um, our solution to that is the XCBM, which is a protocol for, first of all, defining what these messages should look like, handling assets across different chains so that we don't need to reinvent that all the other time, and also being able to do multi-hop routing. How currently a lot of bridges do these calls is by round tripping. You send bytes to another site, handle that in a smart contract, and then you ch a query for uh, execution success or you get some reply back. But that's quite limited and expensive as well, especially if you actually want to hop to the next chain and the next chain and the next chain. Doing that in a round trip manner has a lot of gas fees associated with it. With XCVM, what we actually do is we transmit a full program to the other chain. And that program can contain another nested program. So that means that instead of round tripping back, the nested program gets executed, which then goes to the third chain, which can contain another nested program, which might choose to go back to the original chain or round trip to the other one. And as it turns out, as we started experimenting with this and testing it, it's a super flexible model for uh, actually being able to express what all other companies are doing right now and enabling all products out there. Um, so very solid foundation altogether. Okay, thanks for that explanation. As you're explaining this uh, altogether, I see how much you're about messaging across um, you know, different platforms, different chains, you're building standards out there, you're making things easy for other devs also across chains to come together. And I've seen the interface and you guys are all about interoperability, abstraction, cross-chain, IBC, that's that's a future you see, like which is a very clear stand, right, against the layer one maximalists. So, where do you see the evolution of this development in the next three to five years? So ideally we're going to end up in a space where all bridges have equal security levels, which is based on live client proofs, which means that the bridge itself cannot commit any fraud. Um, that should get us to a point where users don't really need to worry which bridge they're using anymore and protocols are free to pick the cheapest bridge or the fastest connection out there. Um, then hopefully we're going to also end up in a space where a lot of blockchains are going to switch their consensus protocol to something that is proof of stake for energy benefits, but also for security reasons, because proof of stake chains like Thundermint and Babe have deterministic finality. At some point, you know that blocks will never be reverted anymore. Combining these things, trustless bridges and uh, deterministic finality, means that users don't really need to worry anymore on which chain contains their tokens because uh, all chains have approximate equal security. And hopefully that will lead to the true like multi-chain paradigm where users are no longer aware which chain hosts their actual assets. Instead, they interact with cross-chain protocols, which offer them a sort of lens into this world 
and tell them that they own 100 ETH, well, actually they own 20 ETH on Moonbeam, 30 ETH on the actual Ethereum, etc. It's a bit the same as with data centers, right? Like we don't know where our data is exactly hosted. And to be honest, for a lot of products, we don't really care. And the same should, to be honest, exist for crypto as well, for finance in general. Yeah, definitely. I mean, options, efficiency, and more abstraction. I think those are like the key layers to driving more adoption in the industry that we are talking about. And sounds like we are going, uh, we are walking that route right now. All right. So we uh, audited uh, Composable on various er areas of the tech stack. We just finished a cloud security assessment. We also did a pallet uh, security audit. Um, you are the CTO. So tell us a bit about the security strategy you take around the platform and the products and the ongoing work that you have around security. Yeah, so I've been in the crypto space for quite a while and security audits are kind of this holy grail in the crypto space where people believe your protocol is secure if it's been audited. Uh, you and I know the reality of things, uh, which is like software will always contain bugs. So in general, the strategy that we use is uh, audit often, do small audits, be willing to change code if it improves security as well and just re-audit and use these moments with Hellborn in this case to actually learn. Uh, we recently did a workshop session with you guys as well, which was super useful for our developers. And basically try to make it a, a shared responsibility thing where it's not us building something and then handing off a package to you guys and asking you to now stamp it and say it's secure. But actually discussing what makes sense, what architectures make sense. Are we in the right direction? Where do you guys see that we're lacking perhaps a skill set or perhaps in just vision? And the other way around as well as asking you guys like what what does make sense for us to do moving forward and so far the collaboration has been super fruitful we have a relatively large team within the crypto space uh, which means that we produce a lot of code and we uh, deliver quite often and that's very difficult to keep in tandem with audits so instead of going for the work for six months do one massive audit approach we just do it every single month and keep auditing our new changes that's excellent. I mean, at Hall One, we always believe that security is a continual pro process and as you progress, uh, so should security. So that's awesome. Um, all right. And um, more on to a more fun question. Uh, so you have been in the Web3 development space, heading development teams for a really long time. What's one thing that you wish you had learned earlier in your career that now you perhaps know of? So I think a lot of CTOs will kind of agree with me that when you come from a tech heavy background, initially you like to overcomplicate things. And as you grow more in a leadership position, you often will say, well, perhaps the simplest approach might actually be the best approach. That's really what we've taken with XCVM as well. At its core, it's, it's quite a simple protocol, easy to express. And that turns out works a lot better than 800 microservices with a very complicated protocol. I think I also saw that in one of the reviews you guys posted where you did an assessment of like, what do you see in successful startups? Usually the core of the product is actually quite simple and not uh, too over-engineered. That's something that I think almost every programmer should learn early on in their career, but you only get to learn that if you've been through a failure as well. If you've seen a company uh, crash under its own weight because they, they went too broad with their engineering. Um, within crypto itself, I definitely say be open to new technologies. Um, I initially came from more of an Ethereum background, uh, although I did do a lot of work on nodes themselves. Mm -hmm. uh, then started approaching out into uh, near and substrate. Now um, we've at Composable read a lot about the technology coming from Cosmos, and you've, you've saw, seen a lot of yeah. speakers at the change. And because it turns out they've got some great ideas, great technology out there, and they've been kind of overlooked for a long while. Um, especially in like the uh, layer one maxis uh, yeah. ecosystem. Uh, but I think in crypto, that's a big Achilles heel that we all have. The fact that we're trying to build basically the same new financial future, but we're not willing to cooperate across ecosystems. And that at some point is going to lead to either failure of crypto, unless we finally learn to share ideas and really reuse each other's work as well. Yeah, so curiosity, sharing ideas, trust chain again, and of course, simplicity is always underrated, as we know. All right, thank you so much, Carol, for joining us for this brief chat, and uh, I sure loved finding out a little bit more on Composable and what you guys are up to. Thank you again. Thank you.